Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Jeremy Smith. For those of you that have been following the channel for a little while now, you know that I have definitely looked at 35 millimeter lenses a lot in the past. Um, I can think of at least half a dozen times when I tested a 35 millimeter lens. And last year, I brought you guys a review on what I said at that time was the best 35 millimeter lens for the Sony E-mount system and that is Sigma's 35 millimeter 1.2. Uh, while that lens is very big and heavy, I did mention that if a person wanted the best all out performance and they didn't care about the size and weight, I said that was the best lens for the system. But here we are a year later and now we have some new contenders. Uh, not only do we have a new lens by Sigma, we have their new 35 millimeter 1.4 DG DN DN means that it is a mirrorless specific lens. This is kind of like a replacement to the older Sigma uh, 35 1.4 DG, which came out in 2012. I'll put some links to uh, tests of that lens. I tested that lens a bunch of different times. Um, I really love that lens. So yeah, this is kind of an update to that for the mirrorless age we're currently in. And we also have Sony's new 35 millimeter 1.4 G Master. Now both these lenses are really close to each other in price. Uh, they're basically uh, about 1400 USD for the Sony and about 900 USD for the Sigma respectively. So they're actually not that far off in price. I will go ahead and tell you guys this is a long video so spoiler alert, really the Sigma is definitely going to be the best lens uh, for the price. It's definitely the best bang for your buck. However, there are a few things that might lead you towards the G Master. It has a couple little areas where uh, it has some advantages. So what kinds of advantages do you get for that extra 500 bucks? Well, stick around and we'll go into it in more detail. Taking a closer look at these lenses both side by side, you'll notice that the G Master is definitely smaller. And I can certainly tell you guys that this lens is a bit lighter as well. Um, it's not lighter in the sense that it feels cheap. Um, so it's not like, you know, it's not like a, you know, one of the Tamron 28 to 75s or 17 to 28s or anything like that. Um, they didn't quite go that small and lightweight feeling uh, to where it compromises the overall build of the lens. This one still kind of balances build quality with size and weight uh, in a much more appropriate way, in my opinion. So yeah, it has uh, some elements that are plastic, but it's a much, much higher quality. Um, and I believe this aperture ring is actually made of metal. So it balances out size, weight, and overall build quality very nicely. We have a 67 millimeter filter size on this guy. Now, some of you guys may know, uh, I've kind of expressed this before in other videos, I am not the world's greatest fan of aperture rings. And so a lot of you are either really love an aperture ring uh, or you really hate it <laughs> and really not use it much. I kind of fall into the latter category there. The thing I can say about the aperture ring on both these lenses, if I turn the lens the right way here, is that you have the ability to use the click or not. Now the Sony lens doesn't really lock the aperture ring in place. Uh, it has kind of a little bit more resistance. It takes a little bit harder turn to get it off the A position and get it over to this position. And you can see that if we turn, it has a nice sort of progressive feel to it. If I go over here and go to uh, on with the click, you can see it has some clicks to it now. So that's how that works out. But yeah, unfortunately no lock on this one, but there is a good bit of resistance. So, you know, if you're not using the aperture ring, it is still fairly difficult to move it. Have your autofocus and manual focus switch over on the side. And then we also have our focus hole button and it feels just like all the other Sony G Master lenses in that regard. Nice tactile feedback on it. At the back, we have a nice uh, gasket here. 
So this is something that we've expected to see on a lens at this level. If we look at the Sigma, it is bigger and heavier. Um, it is still it is still fairly compact. The thing I'm a little bit disappointed about on this lens is that if you think about Sigma's uh, first 35 1.4 art series DG lens, this lens is really not that much different. I wish I had one of those to put this uh, lens beside. Um, if I come across one, I might insert a little bit of uh, B-roll here to show you. But yeah, this lens is really not a lot smaller and lighter than that lens, uh, which is which is again a little disappointing, just because you know this lens is is the newer mirrorless DN flavor. But uh, yeah, it does have some nice things here. We have a nice aperture ring here, which I cannot turn because it actually does have a lock. So that's something I do like. So now if it's unlocked, you guys will notice that we can go in there and move that. So yeah, we can go in there and we can uh, move that aperture ring with the click there. If we would rather not have the click, just like on the G Master, we can turn the click off and we can get that nice progressive movement. So that's how it works. And it still has a little bit of a lock over on the A side of things. Um, so yeah, some of the early Sigma DN lenses that had an aperture ring, they did not have this lock, but Sigma has since added this. And I do wish Sony would do this on their lenses too. But the upside to all this is that on the Sigmas, when they're on this A position, it does take just a slight bit of resistance to move it over. Uh, so the G Master lens, while it doesn't have the lock, it just takes more effort to get it to move. So anyways, that's how that works out. Um, just like the other recent DN uh, Sigma lenses, you do have the focus hole button, which is nice. Now, I don't know if it's my imagination or not. Unfortunately, I end up holding and testing a lot of lenses. I'm going to have to go back and review this. But this button on this particular lens doesn't seem to be as tactile as some of the other Sigma um, lenses that I've tested recently. And I don't know. I don't know. It might just be my imagination. I'm going to have to go back and, and review that for you guys. But yeah, either way, though, it is important to note that it doesn't have quite as much uh, tactile feedback as the G Master lenses. Minor thing, but it's just something I noticed. Build quality on this is really good. This one, this one does have more uh, metal on the exterior, uh, if that's your thing. Um, it doesn't feel any more solid than the G Master. I think they both feel more solid, but this one does uh, have more metal. So like this entire area is metal. Uh, of course, that does affect the weight of the lens. Sigma went a little bit more towards the absolute uh, the absolute most durable feeling lens and they sacrificed a little bit of the weight so it's not as light as the G Master so again it's just a balance and a preference I think they both feel great personally and we do have a seal at the back of this one as well so all in all very nice if I had to be super nitpicky on the finish of the Sigma lens and this is something I mentioned in every Sigma lens review basically um, it's a fingerprint magnet. You guys can see already how I've got fingerprints all over it. But when reviewing a Sigma lens, I've learned to have a microfiber cloth handy. So, so yeah, there is that. So kind of a kind of a con there a little bit. But very nice looking lens, no doubt. Same size filter on this one as well, 67 millimeter. Really nice looking lens. Now, in terms of the way these lenses perform, there's a few differences uh, that I'll quickly note. Um, I will say that if you love to manually focus, go ahead and stop watching this video right now and go ahead and just uh, buy the G Master. The G Master has about a 180 degree focus uh, throw. So basically, if you turn this ring halfway, you know, it's going to be from uh, infinity uh, to uh, close up. The Sigma lens though has a really, really, really long focus throw and uh, it is, it's very, very long. So yeah, if you like to manually focus in video or something like that, yeah, the, the Sigma is not going to be a very, 
very positive experience in that regard at all. So that's one thing that, uh, that I noted there. The other difference between these lenses also has to do with focusing. If you start looking at the focus speed of these two lenses, Sony is using uh, linear focus motors and they are way, way faster than the stepper motor uh, of the Sigma. And so the good news is both these um, lenses have motors that are very quiet, but yeah, the speed of the, fo of the uh, stepper motor in the Sigma lens cannot compete speed-wise with the Sony G Master. So if you're looking for that uh, focus, that very fast focus tech, definitely the G Master wins there. To test the focus speed of both these lenses, I use Sony's A1. Since it does have the best AF performance currently in Sony's lineup, I set the AF transition speed to the absolute fastest setting, and I also changed the uh, subject shift to responsive. That way the lens would just go ahead and focus immediately. You can see on the Sigma here, it doesn't do a bad job. Now do keep in mind you can't hear the audio, but both these lenses are silent. The Sigma does well, as you can see, it's not exactly slow, but the Sony here is in a completely different class. Um, it focuses just lightning fast back and forth there. Another thing to consider is if you have one of Sony's higher end cameras, uh, like say an A92 or an A1 or an A9, and you're interested in taking advantage of those cameras insane burst rates, be aware that you cannot do that with the Sigma lens. Um, if you are shooting with something like say an A1 and you want to do 30 frames a second uh, burst rate, you cannot do that with the Sigma lens. You can only do up to 15 frames a second. And 15 frames a second doesn't even quite match the speed of the A9 or the A92. Obviously with Sony's latest G Master lenses, you're going to be able to do that very, very fast burst rate. Now I'm not sure how many people are going to use a 3514 Prime. Uh, to do action sports, uh, perhaps if you're shooting volleyball or basketball and you're going to be under the goal or, you know, close up, then it might. But it is still important to note that, yeah, if you have one of those cameras, you can't do that high burst rate with the Sigma lens. Okay, so enough of that. Let's take a look at some of the images from these lenses side by side and kind of discuss some other uh, aspects of the overall image quality. All right, guys, so taking a quick look at some images from both these lenses, uh, I do apologize that I was not able to take very many samples side by side. Hopefully soon I'll be able to kind of update this uh, video and show you guys even more samples. But uh, I just wanted to get an initial look at the lenses and see how they did sharpness wise. Now, the next time that I look at these lenses, I will be doing my famous like backyard test and I'll look at the edge sharpness using uh, an image of my fence, but since I didn't have time to do that, I figured I would just look at a little uh, chart here. Taking a closer look here just at the center of the image, um, yeah, both lenses look really good. We have the Sigma over here on the left and the Sony on the right, and I'm not really disappointed with either of these. I mean, sharpness wise, they both look very, very similar. They both handle longitudinal chromatic aberration pretty well. We're not really seeing a lot of color fringing along this chart. Now, both these lenses do have lens profiles that automatically get applied in the camera. I haven't applied any additional profiles in Lightroom, but uh, yes, I would imagine that a lot of the uh, lack of color fringing we see has to do with the default built-in profiles being applied to both the images from these lenses. One area where I do notice a bit more of a difference is in terms of our bokeh. And as we look at the edge of the frame, we also notice one more difference, and that's the fact that there is a little bit of a difference in framing of these images. Now, apparently I don't do so great of leveling the camera, but uh, you'll notice that I did have both uh, images taken in the exact same spot. But you'll notice that the composition is slightly different the Sony image looks a little bit more cropped compared to the Sigma uh, lens image. And that is because both these lenses do have a bit of focus breathing. I'm not really going to get into focus breathing in this video at all, but yes, they both do exhibit this behavior some. But looking around the frame here, you'll notice, especially at these little circular highlights, you'll notice that that area is just slightly smoother on the Sony versus the Sigma. 
Um, and we can kind of see the same thing happening in this sort of high contrast area here. Keep in mind though, guys, this is super photo nerd stuff. This is not like a huge, huge deal. Taking a look at a couple of other images here. Same thing, we've got our Sigma over here. We have our Sony over on the right hand side here. If we zoom in, very similar images from both. The Sigma lens might be just slightly warmer than the Sony in color, but um, just note that that is not due to the camera. I did have the white balance manually set to the same value whenever I was shooting both these images. If you look at our bokeh here, you will notice that in some areas of the frame, it looks pretty similar. Like up in these trees, I could not tell the difference at all if you blindfolded me between both these lenses. However, in more high contrast areas, like over here, you can notice that there is again a pretty, there's actually a pretty big difference here. You'll notice how all the bokeh balls back here are, uh, are specular highlights, if we will. Those are all much more smoothly rendered with less defined edges. That is not the case on the Sigma lens here. Coming down to this area of extreme high contrast, where we've got all the sun reflecting off the individual stones in the pavement, you can see a pretty big difference in how the Sony is able to render all this as a nice smooth blur, whereas we see that contrast of the Sigma really making everything look uh, a lot less smooth and a bit more harsh. Again, this is super photo nerd stuff. I think they both look really good. Um, I was shooting heavily backlit here. And perhaps I'll do a little bit more of a uh, control test in a studio environment uh, and use an artificial light source. But do note that I shot these images about a minute apart from each other. So this is still not a bad test. I think both lenses handled flare pretty well. If we come down through here, you'll notice that we do see, we actually see a bit more flare with the Sony lens. Coming down though, we kind of see it from both. Um, neither lens does terrible here because they both do a very good job of holding on to contrast despite this very, very heavily backlit scene. So I think, you know, they both did good. We'll zoom in a little bit tighter for a moment to show you guys one final thing. You'll notice here, color fringing wise, you'll, you'll see that there's very little color fringing um, in both these, there's some, but keep in mind we are shooting wide open at 1.4. If you see this sort of like white specular uh, reflection here in Chloe's eyes, that would be me. Uh, precisely, that would be my legs. <laughs> I was wearing white pants when I took this photograph. So yeah, neither lens is hurting for sharpness or detail. Uh, there are some slight differences in depth of field between both these shots. So you can see how our depth of field was just slightly different. But both lenses are very sharp indeed. While the Sigma may be the best bang for your buck, once you take into account the smaller size and weight, the much faster autofocus system, the better bokeh, uh, the more neutral color rendering, and also the better manual focus experience, to me the Sony G Master is clearly the winner between these two lenses. I'll definitely post uh, more side-by-side -side samples of the lenses in the description below. I have a lot more images with the G Master especially that I'd like to show you guys. Uh, but yeah, you guys can tell that while they're close, it's probably not a surprise to you why I bought the G Master. Anyways, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, write me in the comments and let me know what else you'd like to see. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.